Welcome to Reparations Roundup News and Views with the incredible Nikichi Taifa, featuring current updates and historical tidbits on the reparations movement in the U.S. and worldwide. Taifa is authentic and unapologetic, captivating and charismatic, entertaining and witty, and one of the most knowledgeable and longest serving experts on the issue of reparations in the country. Now here's your host, award-winning author and attorney, Nikichi Taifa. Welcome back. This is Nikichi Taifa for another edition of Reparations Roundup. Hmm. America's last known slave ship contains the ghost of the 110 kidnapped Africans who were once confined, shackled together in an excrement-filled, earless cage no longer than 23 feet. After the Civil War, these former Clotilda torture ship captives enslaved for five years after their landing in Alabama and unable to return to their homeland, decided to separate from the racist whites and unhelpful free blacks and to create their very own town, Africa Town. It's just three miles north of Mobile, Alabama. Listen to what Cujo Lewis, whose original African birth name was Kosola, and known as the last African alive from the Clotilda slave ship, listen to what he told Zora Neale Hurston in the early 1930s. We say that because we want to go back into Africa soil and we see we can't go. Therefore, we make the Africa where they fetch us. It is so beautifully positive hearing how the survivors of the Ma'afa Middle Passage practice Ujima collective work and responsibility and Ujamaa cooperative economics. Did the former white slave owners help? Nope. Were they paid reparations? Nope. Quote, they did not take off one cent for us, said Cujo of the land collectively purchased after emancipation. Africa Town is also known as Plateau Magazine Point. It is the first of its kind in America. And it is a story amongst countless others that we in the reparations movement must continue to uplift. Many black divers have searched the bottoms of the country's seas for haunted, terror-filled Ma'afa slave vessels that have shipwrecked. But until the discovery of the Clotilda in 2019, there has never been a fully intact slave ship wreck to examine. <laughs> that is where my dear longtime friend, Brother Kamal Siddiqui comes in, an expert diver with the National Association of Black Scuba Divers and Divers with a Purpose. He explores the Atlantic to resurrect our history. And you're about to hear some of that in an exclusive interview that I recently had with him. You can also see some of what he saw underwater in the film, Clotilda, the last American slave ship, the new National Geographic Channel discovery about the ship, about Africa town, and about the descendants of those 110 captives currently being shown on Hulu and Disney. Now, for my exclusive interview, stay tuned. Well, greetings, Kamal Siddiqui. How are you, my brother? 
Uh, I'm doing well, and KJ, always great to see you. <laughs> always great to see you. I mean, we're talking about way back in the day when we used to be at Howard University, used to live next door to each other after I graduated from Howard. And uh -huh. little, I, I mean, I know that you were majoring in engineering, but little did I know that you were going to come out years and decades later and be the chief black scuba diver, blacks with a purpose, diving with a purpose, archaeology, underwater, uncovering slave ships and slave wrecks, going down in history. Come on, tell us, what is it that you are doing now, my brother? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Nkechi, for that question. But uh, I don't think I ever publicly thank you for saving me from homelessness. <laughs> yeah, you rescued me off the street and, and uh, gave me an apartment right next door. So uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a long journey, you know. I I never would have realized that I would have been, you know, where I am now either. You know, we, you know, you never know where spirit's going to take you, right? So you just keep putting in the work, keep struggling, you know, making it righteous, and uh, you know, typically you end up in a good place. So um, about, yeah, tell us about this underwater archaeology and and the stuff that you do with diving and diving with a purpose. Yeah, yeah, Diving with a Purpose is an incredible organization that uh, I ran across around 19, I'm sorry, 2007, six or seven or so. And I'm currently uh, a lead instructor and on the board of the organization. It's a nonprofit. And what we do, um, you know, we found out that uh, there's a certain lack of information, incredible information actually around the role that slave ships played in this, this, this global history. And so um, there was some 40,000 voyages across the Atlantic and uh, some 12,000 vessels or ships that participated in those voyages. But we only know about, at best, five or six of those ships. <laughs> Why is that, you know? You know, they, don't, they wasn't carrying bullions of gold, you know? That gold could be relative, right? I think that was carrying black gold, those black bodies. And so, but anyway, so we wanted to tell those stories. You know, there's some incredible, incredible stories in Kechi around each one of these vessels. And so if we can uh, bring that history out into the public square. We think uh, it'll raise the consciousness of, uh, of our community particularly, but, but the world in general. So what we do is uh, we document these vessels as we find them, working with our maritime archaeologists uh, to tell these stories. And right now, I've worked on about, <clears throat> let's see, I think it's four or five uh, of the ones that are known. And one off the coast of South Africa is the very first one that was documented where, you know, Africans actually were drowned. It was in the process of being enslaved. So the, the South Jose Phuket, the Africa. Uh, currently, you know, somewhat engaged with the Clotilde project. That's the last vessel that brought uh, black bodies of Africans into the U.S. Illegally, <laughs> right? Because illegally, the definitely they, illegally. It was ended in 1808. And I think the Clotilde was like something like 1860, something like 1860, that. that's correct. You know, and for me, in case you to be, to be honest, on a sort of a personal perspective, this question of legal, how is it ever legal to enslave a human body, right? Mm -hmm. So, but you know, if you want to take the framework of legal, I know you have a legal background. Uh, yeah, it was illegal, you know, um, it was a, a dastardly case. And even before the Clotilde in 1859, it's a, another wreck that the DWP or Diving with the Purpose is interested in called the Wanderer. And the Wanderer was, the penultimate vessel that brought Africans into Jekyll Island, Georgia, and illegally. And they brought some over 400 individuals. And on the Clotilde, that was about 110. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring these stories out. And so there's been a recent, there's been recent media interest in our work. Um, a recent documentary in Sundance Film Festival called Descendant, that's focusing on the descendant community of the Clotilde, uh, got some awards, and there's another documentary that's going to be coming out real soon. So mm -hmm. we just want to tell the story. We're not about the fame and fortune. You know, this is important to our history, our legacy, 
and bringing these people back into our memory, is, we think is a very important thing to do. And I think it's very, very critical work that you are doing. I remember uh, Zora Hill Nurse, Hurston uh, did a, a book back in the day that I think just recently came out called Barracoon, dealing with the uh, the Clotilda in the last, um, I guess, survivor, Cucho, mm -hmm. I think his name was, or his um, other name, he had an African name that was still um, in intact. Um, but we don't, we don't learn about this stuff in the schools. And with all this banning or critical race theory, it's questionable whether we'll ever know about some of these things. So is there a museum or, I mean, I know that, I think I heard that the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington has expressed a lot of interest in the work that you all do. And I think you all are partnering in any type, in some type of way. Yeah, that's correct. Um... Yeah, DWP is what's considered a global partner with the Slave Rex Project. And the Slave Rex Project is a project under the National Museum of African American History and Culture, whose, again, mission is to you know, bring these, uh, the stories of these shipwrecks and the survivors and also descendants, not necessarily survivors, but the descendant communities back into our collective memory. So we, we are proud to be partners with them uh, as well. So the Clotilda story is, is so unique and incredible. Again, it's um, out of that whole body of, of work around the Atlantic slave trade, it is the only uh, vessel where you can trace directly to the descendant community, direct connection. And not only that, you have an incredible artifact, the vessel itself, that's about 80% intact. Why is that? Because most of these vessels, I think, are wooden, and they, the the water, the ocean eats it up. So how, why, why yeah. is it that the flotilla was so um, intact? Yeah, there's bacteria, sea worms, and so forth that uh, cause these vessels to deteriorate and eat them up. And then the forces, the dynam dynamic forces in the oceans themselves, storms and so forth, breaks them up and scatter them over a wide field. But in the case of the flotilla. The perpetrators, the criminals, the thugs that tried to, that basically got away with this this uh, this crime, uh, they they towed the Clotilda upriver on the Mobile River and tried to burn it there, but it didn't burn completely. It sank into the river, and when it sunk into the river, over time, sediment coming down uh, on the river began to bury parts of it, and part of it was still sticking out of the water, and so that. The buried portion has been preserved, but more importantly, the the Mobile River is basically a freshwater river, mm -hmm. and so you have this mixing of salt water and fresh water, mm -hmm. which uh, is a good thing because it doesn't give the bacteria an opportunity, the salt water bacteria or the freshwater bacteria, to really catch hold and start eating away the wood material. So it made it preserved it longer, in essence. So that was a good thing. And so we can actually see from our sonar images, you know, the, the outline of the ship. And more incredibly, we can see the almost 500 square foot space where these black bodies was held. Mm -hmm. We don't have that record anywhere in, hum in, in the historical record. We can exactly see the space where they was held. And you're cramming 110 bodies in that space, mm -hmm. if you can imagine. A little over, a little larger than, say, your living room. Oh my God! Getting 110 bodies in that space for for oh, three months. Weeks or months, yeah. And sailing over treacherous waters across the Atlantic. I mean, that's just the the light side of the story. The conditions that they were in, living in their own feces and excrement and so forth. It was just amazing. Those are just again, the light sides of the stories. <laughs> mm -hmm. It gets even more incredible and amazing than that. So let me ask you this. I want to get into some of that more incredible and amazing, but before we do, were any artifacts uncovered? Or was anything intact in terms of uh, anything on the ship other than the ship itself? Just curious. Yeah, there's there's more work that needs to be done. You know, we're sort of like coming out of the discovery phase and probably going. The next phase is going to be going more intense in, in investigation and evaluation and interrogation of the site to see what is actually there, even possibly involving some DNA testing because mm -hmm. there might be some DNA material buried in that hole. Mm -hmm. um, the compartments of a ship, you know, mm -hmm. when you put up a wall under the deck, 
-hmm. It's called a bulkhead. And it's very, and the way the ship is lying into the, in the river, it's very likely that's been accumulation of some DNA material in those crevices and so forth. Mm -hmm. You can extract that DNA and then tie it directly to the descendant community. Mm -hmm. That would be incredible. And also, that community, uh, go on. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say very quickly, there might be some other artifacts on the vessels, you know, like the, you know, the huge cooking pots they used to mm -hmm. cook the gruel that used to feed these, these, these black bodies, captive black bodies, mm -hmm. uh, possibly even shackles, we don't know, but there's mm -hmm. other possible artifacts that can tell the story or give us deeper insight on, to, on the story of the, of the Clotilda and what actually happened. Uh, so this community that came out of the uh, the Clotilda, my, I, my understanding is, is still in Mobile, Alabama, the descendants of, of these uh, uh, Africans who have been kidnapped and enslaved, and it's called Africa Town. Is That's there anything correct. you can share with us about that? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's called Africa Town, and it's right north of uh, Mobile, Alabama, along the river there. But it's been a, it's an incredibly resilient community. They have suffered so many injustices, not, I mean, you can draw in terms of the injustices, the illegal activity of bringing them here 160 years ago. And you look across those 160 years, you can see some incredible injustices to this community. Not just the general redlining, and, but more, more impactful has been the environmental justice that this community has suffered. And yeah, that's been in industries put up around this community, trying to wipe it off the map. Uh, and that's been health consequences of the folks in the community because of this industrial development around the community. The state ran a, a, a highway right down mm -hmm. through the community, separating the church from its sacred graveyard, mm -hmm. impacting some of those graves. Um, it's just been one injustice after another. But the community has survived. They have some very strong warriors in that community that's continued to uh, to tell their story. Mm -hmm. And because of this discovery of the vessel now, um, I think the descendant community is going to get even more powerful and hopefully uh, see some sign of justice mm -hmm. and that peace. Uh, I'll, I'll, as they go through this healing and reconciliation, um, at some point they're going to have to address this issue of justice and what that looks like for them. Yeah, and I call it repertory justice, repertory <laughs> justice. Yeah. And, you know, it's like caskets are being opened up all over the country in terms of uh, the abuses that have been hidden for so, so very long. And the work that you've been doing with the National, is it Association of Black Scuba Divers? I know you're a, a past president of that organization, Divers with a Purpose. Are more and more Black folk getting into this area dealing with underwater archaeology and uh, slave ship wrecks and, and the like. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. You know, it's, the work is, is, is so incredible. It's a lot of work out there that needs to be done. And, you know, we're not so vain to say that we can do it all ourselves. And so we, we are training certified scuba divers to do this work. Um, every year we have an intense immersion program uh, to train, again, certified divers to do shipwreck documentation and surveying. Uh, just as a quick aside, that's not the only thing we do. We are also just interested in the general condition of the marine environment itself. And so we, we also have provide training and coral reef restoration. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you know, you know, there's a lot of, believe it or not, black divers out there, scuba divers. And if you're interested, we can take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> you <yeah. laughs> And get oh, you, I do, I do I want would, to give that That's amazing. And get you, and if you're working on a, I don't know, hopefully come to some sort of, uh, get some traction, uh, reparations project for the Africa Town community, and you actually dive on the Clotilda. Wow. Do you think amazing. that, I mean, are you being funny, or you, is that something that oh, might be that, in the future? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> hey, it's always a possibility. Like we said at the beginning, you never knew you would end up here today, you know, talking about this story. Absolutely. So there's and, many you know, possibilities. I really appreciate the role you played. I've used you as a consultant. I, I had taken a group uh, to Key West and, and Cuba on a cruise mm, actually yeah. around um, in 2017. And I remembered you had something to do with Key West. So there was some kind of slave cemetery or something there. So I know I called you. 
from Key West and say, brother, come out. Tell me what is here that we need to see. And you hook me up with this place called Higgs Beach, uh, 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 the Higgs Beach. And, 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 and there was uh, the Henrietta Marie. I'm not quite sure whether that was that same trip. But tell me a little bit more about, about that, because I really appreciate it just enriched our trip all the more so. Yeah, there's there's somewhat of a connectivity between Higgs Beach and and Diving with the Purpose actually. Uh, Diving with the Purpose got to start around this uh, slave vessel called the Guerrero. I won't go into a lot of detail here because these stories can get long and <laughs> and deep. But anyway, the Guerrero crashed off the coast of Key Largo uh, back in uh, uh, I keep getting dates 1827, I believe it was, and so. Um, uh, the survivors of that crash was taken into Key West and they landed there on Higgs Beach. But prior to that uh, arrival, there was another incredible uh, incident that happened with three other slave vessels, the, the William, the Bogota, and the uh, uh, third one is slipping my mind here, William, Bogota, and the, it'll come to me in a moment. But anyway, each one of those vessels had a four to 500 individuals on them. And there was vessels that was called, caught by the so-called the naval fleet called the Africa fleet that the British and U.S. was using to capture after 1808. Uh, the end of the uh, slave, the, 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 the importation stop. of Africans into yeah. the U.S. They ended that. And so they had captured these vessels and they brought them into, into Key West there. But by the time they got there, uh, hundreds of these Africans had died. And so they just buried them on the beach there. Mm -hmm. And that was unknown in history until, I think the uh, recently until an archeologist down in Key West was, he did some sonars and saw these markings that showed up on some subsurface uh, investigation that saw these graves under the surface. Same sort of approach they use at the Africa burial, at burial grounds in New York that yeah. showed these graves under, uh, on the beach there. And so there was a big effort by Gene Tenney, who was a good brother down in Florida, and others to memorialize these Africans. And so that's the same beach that uh, the, descent, the, the survivors of the Guerrero was landed on as well. And some of those, one or two of those survivors was buried in that, that beach as well. So there's a, a very nice memorial down there. Hopefully you got a chance to see I, it while you were down saw there. saw the wonderful Adinkra symbols that were there. Yeah. It was, it was, Ah, it was very emotional. It was very yeah, emotional. It's, it's a very powerful, sacred sort of space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Brother Kamal, I don't know. I, I don't. What does the future hold for you in terms of this field of, of work? Do you see us um, uncovering even more, or with the things that have been uncovered, more information coming out that we can really help with this whole quest for reparations that? Um, many people worldwide and part of the African diaspora have been um, on a quest for. Yeah, there's, there's, like we said at the beginning, in case it is a lot of work that needs to be done, a lot of missing history, a lot of missing stories. So we're going to continue to work on the projects we're working on, with Clotilde, Guerrero. The final word is not yet on the exact location of the Guerrero. And there's other vessels that we're interested in. I mentioned the Wanderer. That came into Jekyll Island, and uh, I'll just <laughs> other stories as well. We was recently down in uh, Saint John. Saint John, there was a wreck down there. That's uh, 18th century wreck. Um, mm -hmm. And if you remember, y'all know you know a lot about the Haitian Revolution in 1804, mm -hmm. but in 1733 there was a revolution. The the Africans took over the island of Saint John, and they governed it for almost a year. Mm -hmm. And so we think this vessel might be, might be, we don't know yet, might possibly be related to that rebellion where the British and the French models came in and brought some ships with guns and things that tried to repress, um, repress the rebellion. So more work needs to be done on that. Um, there's other slave vessels that have incredible histories that, that needs to be told. I don't know if you heard of the Lewiston. The Lucin was a Dutch vessel that crashed off the coast of Suriname, Guyana. Near Suriname and Guyana, it was heading into Suriname, trying to get into to the Suriname River. Long story short, it crashed at the mouth of the of another river, 
the 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 uh, the Maury River, and so when it crashed, uh, it had about 600 Africans on it in Ketchum. And so when the storm came up that jeopardized the vessel, the captain tried to drop anchor. He dropped anchor, and that swung the vessel around and crashed it into the reef. The hull breached, and he gave the order to abandon ship. But before he told the crew to abandon ship, he told them to lock down the hatches. I heard about this. That was the story. Oh, my, such depravity. And, and so, so the Africans were not allowed to escape. Locked in, <laughs> locked in chains and shackles over three or four days, breaking up, falling into the sea. Genocide. Oh, my gosh. And this That's is just one story. In the school. This is not taught in the schools. Just one story. What was the name of that ship again? I'm sorry. The, the Luston, L-E-U-S. L e u s e d n the Luston. Luston, wow. The Luston. Yeah. There's so a, I'm a, glad uh, that the media is beginning to be interested in all this. I, I'm glad that the story of um, the Clotilda is being uh, shown and aired right now, and, and I'm hoping that there will be many, many more. And this one of the Luston men, I mean, who gonna pay reparations on my soul? Yes. Oh my God. On, on these millions of souls, on these millions of souls. Uh, mm. Thank you, it's incredible. Uh, there's a couple of good reference books out there, you know, um, Ann Bailey, who's, who wrote a nice book called African Voices of the Atlantic Trade, Slave Trade. Um, Marcus Redeker's book, The Slave Ship, incredible piece of work. He has an incredible story now about this vessel called the, the Spa, S-A-P-S-A-R-R. -R. I'm sorry, P A R R, the mm -hmm. par, and about how they tied this African woman with a rope under under her. You want me to tell this story? <laughs> under Go on, her do arm, it, do it. Let me just take a try deep breath. Tried to discipline the other Africans on board, and from a pole they hung her over the side of the ship and lowered her down into the water. Once she got in waist deep in the water, she let out these incredible screams. And they pulled it back up. The sharks had bitten off her legs. Oh my God! Stop. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's I. Yeah. Mm. That's just one of thousands mm. of these stories mm. Mm -mm. that you know the so-called anti-critical race theories and others don't want to get out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. This is this is history, and we need to know it. Our people need to know. All people need to know, and yes. there needs to be a reckoning there needs to be a national excuse me an international reckoning on race come out yeah, the, the world brother. has been affected by by the by the movement of millions of african people against their will so this thank is a global so story much. sure thank you yes, thank you so much for all of the work that you've been doing i'm waiting for your story to come out your book to be come out because it will be a masterpiece in and of itself uh yeah. Keep yeah, on just, just real quickly, you know, I'm not in it for the fame and fortunes, really. <laughs> you know, I, I need just need to get this work done and the stories told. But if a book or something like that helps, you know, you know, yeah. it'll be done. Yeah, it does help so that future yeah. generations can know what's happening, sure. not just books, Understood. other multimedia um, aspects of our movement. Thank Understood. you very yeah. much, my brother. Thank you. Always good to see you. Always good to see. And I, I didn't know you were facing homelessness, but. <laughs> and I helped out with finding your spot next to sure. me. Back I'm in good the day. now. So, so <laughs> thank you for taking me to the next level. <laughs> it's all good. Appreciate okay, it. Okay, my brother. Have a great day. All right, be well. Peace and blessings. So, my brothers and sisters, what are your thoughts about the discovery of the Clotilda? The activity of black scuba divers such as Kamal Siddiqui and his underwater archaeology pursuits and the investigation and preservation of slave shipwrecks. Do you feel this is a legitimate vehicle? No pun intended for reparations. <laughs> Please put your comments down below or contact me at www.reparationeducation.com project.org. Reparation without the S, educationproject.org. Nikichi Taifa. Till the next Reparations Roundup, sign off.
You have been listening to Reparations Roundup News and Views with People's Lawyer Nakichi Taifa. The issue of reparations is on fire and Taifa is spreading the message like a storm. Visit reparationseducationproject.org for info on the movement. For the full Nakichi Taifa experience, visit nakichitaifa.org. Reparations is an issue whose time has come. Don't miss the next Reparations Roundup.